Hello everybody, this is Colin Solder and today we'll be doing another review. A company named KSGER, possibly inspired by my failure to deliver on a similar project, they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, send me a really nice soldering iron for free. Let's unbox it really quickly and see what it can do. Inside the box we have the controller, a handle, three included tips and a few more extra they agreed to send me. And now for the most important part of any unboxing. Back to the iron, let's follow a piece of wisdom I once heard and not turn it on but instead take it apart. The back cover contains the power cord socket and, which is a really nice surprise, a fuse holder. It comes off with four Phillips screws. The front is not that convenient, requiring us to peel off the sticker first. Another four screws and we're in. Most of the inside is occupied by a large power supply board. It seems it was designed especially for the soldering station, which is unexpected for me. All the capacitors are name brand and the external connections are made using removable plugs. Nice. Next in the case we have a small battery for the RTC and finally attached to the front panel is the controller board. The main ICs are the STM32F103 processor, a 24C08 external EEPROM chip that most likely stores the configuration between uses, and a TPC8107 P MOSFET, probably used as a high side switch. The handle comes apart pretty easily, revealing an integrated holder for the tip and several machine metal parts around it. The tube in the front even seems to be made out of real carbon fiber. With all that done, we can put it back together and see if it still works. First, let's quickly look through the menu. First two options are for standby and sleep modes, which activate automatically and reduce the temperature based on inactivity. I really like this feature, especially because of how quickly it heats back up again, but more on that in a moment. Next we have the boost setting, which allows us to temporarily increase the set temperature. Next is stepping, which allows us to set the increment the temperature increases by when setting it. The buzzer can be turned off, which is, in my opinion, the most important thing here. The power on state can also be changed to any of the modes. Setting it to sleep allows me to keep the iron constantly powered and just switch it on when needed, which I really like. But enough about the menu, let's get to the user experience. I mentioned it heats up fast. How fast? Well, let me demonstrate. That was under 10 seconds from room temperature to 300 degrees Celsius. This result is possible thanks to the closely integrated heating and measurement in the tip. I used this iron for a few weeks and noticed quite large improvement over my old one, especially because of the much narrower handle and how close the tip is to the hand. But the best part is that you can switch tips while working if you get the right tool. The right tool being obviously this one dollar kitchen glove. What's more, it can also work as a stand for the handle. This is pretty handy, as normal stands don't quite fit it and one isn't included. One downside I noticed is the handle getting warm to touch at high temperatures after a while. While not impacting the use in any way, it is slightly annoying. So, let's sum this up. First off, it's a well-designed piece of equipment that does what it says on the box and has some extra nice configuration options. But it does have those screws you need to peel a sticker to get to. The version I got cost $60, though the cheapest one is just 45. Compared to brand name stations, that's a great deal. The Zyron uses T12 tips and there is a lot of them, it's easy to find one for any use case. Those tips, especially original ones, are expensive though. I personally don't go through that many, but it's something to consider. I really really like the steel and carbon fiber handle, it is well balanced and small. The lack of any sort of a stand is a bit of a problem though, and finally, like usually, the whole thing is closed source. 
It would be nice to have the ability to easily tinker with it, but it isn't really necessary thanks to the well-written software. So in summary, I really like this thing and recommend it to anybody looking for a reasonably priced soldering iron that is also pretty damn good. Thank you for watching, you can share your thoughts about the video below and please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos about electronics.